Firstly, are you OK? I hope so. Continuing with our... Uh, this is part three of the Lost Pubs of Eccles. Uh, this will be the last episode. Um, I'm here today in the car park of the White Horse Pub in Eccles. Uh, the security guard over there says we can't film in there, but here we go. It's the wall of it. The White Horse Pub, many of you will remember it, hopefully. It was situated roughly just over there. Um, there'll be photos of it in the article, hopefully, in the video. Now, the first licensed record show was in 1803. And it was called the Shovel and Broom. Thing about horses, I should imagine. And then in 1809, it was called the Trafford Volunteer. Now, this name comes from the fact that local men were recruited to fight in the Napoleonic Wars. And if you ever go in Eccles Parish Church, which you should, there's still the armorial coat of arms for that regiment. And there used to be a set of gates in Eccles Parish Church that called the Napoleonic Gates, but they've all gone. But the memorial shield of arms is still in the church. Now, by 1825, the name White Horse was established. Um, it, it was a big, well, it was a lovely big pub. Bowling Green was at the back of it. It was one of the main pubs in Eccles. Um, 1940, Christmas, just before Christmas, actually, the Blitz. On the corner here, numbers, let me get this right here, 94 and 96, Gilderbrook Road. A landmine dropped just outside it, and it killed... 17 people. They were celebrating a bit of a party. They were an AOP people, they were medical people, and the house next door got took out by the blast. Fortunately, the, not fortunately, well, the pub, yeah, fortunately, it didn't get bombed, and it carried on until 1969. It was demolished to make way for the M602 motorway behind me, which I keep referring to. And then in 1973, the new pub, which is now the Sainsbury's, opened. I actually came here on the day it opened in 1973. It opened in the dinner time and there was the mayor of Salford and Eccles were here, local dignitaries. And in the evening they were open at half past five and I was told there was going to be free beer. So I did turn up and there was quite a crowd outside the gates, well the, the double doors over there. People were let in, I rushed to the bar and the first person who got served got charged and the pub emptied very quickly, as you can imagine. The landlord that day was Matt Booth. I don't know if you remember Matty Booth. He was here for many a year, Matt and his wife. His family were in the licensing trade. They had the brown cow in Witten and the white horse, I think it is, in Swinton. Now, other landlords of the years, there was Luciano, the Italian landlord. I don't know if you remember him. There was a lovely chap from Calgary, footballer. Uh, there was Roy and Elsie. They would be remembered by a lot of people. They were in many years. Bev Callard, my God, remember her. Coronation Street, she took the pub over and God knows why. She thought she'd transform it into a champagne bar with a VIP area and the stars of television and screen would come in, grace the pub, drink champagne and make her rich. Uh, none of those happened. Uh, the pub was a total disaster. It was. I'm sorry, but you ruined it, Beth. You did. You really did. Quite a few people who have worked here over the years. People like Olivia, uh, Paul Berber, lovely chap Paul. He died a while ago. Uh, Kath McHugh, Michelle. I didn't know all the barmaids. I knew a few of them, obviously. Um, the pub. I spent many an hour in there. It's a great little pub. It's a big pub. Big room with cabaret on most evenings. And the back was a pool room. Uh, it was like the in pub in the 70s, 80s. It was always full, but 2018 it closed. I'm not sure for what reason. Sainsbury's bought it. It's now a Sainsbury's supermarket, I think you'd call it, or a mini market. And you're not allowed to film in the car park. How sad is that? It was a great pub, a reminder. And I'm certain many people watching this will have had a few pints in here. Robinson's House, nice pub. Gone. <laughs> I'm at the top of Church Street, Eccles. Behind me, you can see the construction of a brand new 24-storey block of flats. Make that of what you will. It's uh, 
The thing that galls me is at the bottom of those flats, there was a lovely little pub, the railway, probably better known as the Top House because of its proximity to the top of Church Street where I am now. Um, it license dates from 1862, uh, which ties in with the growth of the town. Now the thing was, in 1889, it had a, a female, a landlady, Eliza Cummins, which was the first for Eccles. It's quite a position to hold that in Eccles, to be a woman landlady, because it was it quite a rough, not rough pub, but yeah, she must have had a wits about her, shall we say. Now the pub was always known as being as an Irish pub. It was only small with two rooms, a little vault at the front and a big room, bigger room, not much bigger actually, at the back. But they had live music on, uh, you may remember the landlord John Collins and his wife Bridie, they ran it for many years, a lovely couple. Um, as I say, the Irish theme runs through this pub all the time. It again changed many hands. I think one landlord in the, in the late 1990s, he took the front bay window out. It was a protected building and he had to put it back in. It made this horrible flat front of the pub. Beautiful windows taken out, Victorian acid etched one. Don't know where that went, probably sold it. And as I say, moving speedily on, Paul Quinn took over the pub. Lovely chap, Paul. He now owns the station bar behind me. Uh, he was one of the last landlords there. Now, I may be wrong here, I was told that Booth bought it. We had the stone on Church Street, demolished Booth store. He bought it with the proviso that he closed it down and he was going to build on the land, which he's done successfully. So, there you go. Lovely pub, railway. And now we've got this. Yeah. Add your own comments on that one. Continuing with our journey of the Lost Pubs of Eccles, part three. As you can see, I'm sat outside the Cross Keys. Now, the Cross Keys have got a wonderful, rich history. And I would suggest that it was the most popular pub in Eccles at one time. Very upmarket, prestigious pub. I'll give you a brief history of it. It's first licensed in 1629 and is one of the earliest recorded pubs on the uh, Ale Register. Uh, it's gone through various name changes, uh, the Key, the Golden Key, the Cross Key, and finally the Cross Keys. And for those of you heathens, the Cross Keys refer to the Keys of Heaven that St. Peter was holding. You can see depicted in many statues, paintings, etc. And we've got Eccles Parish Church behind us, so it all ties in. Now, Let's speed forward to 1830. The landlord was a chap called John Bradburn. John Bradburn was a big, well, the well-known family in Eccles of that era. But his claim to fame was William Huskisson, the first man in the world to be killed by a train. Uh, it was he from he was going to Manchester with the Duke of Wellington. He, he stepped off of the train and got hit by it. He was a bit of a dozy sod, to be honest, but there you go. He achieved immortality by becoming the first person in the world to be killed by a train, or the first world's train spotter, perhaps. I digress. Bradburn made the coffin for him to transport him back to Liverpool. He was the MP for Liverpool, as I say. Some people have cheered because he was a scouser and an MP. Double whammy. I think that's a bit cruel. The following year, Bradburn's wife, Elizabeth, she committed suicide in rather bizarre, tragic circumstances. The back of the pub used to be the old brew house. Pubs them days used to brew their own beer on premises. And she committed suicide by sticking her head in a boiling vat of liquor. Quite a horrific death, isn't it? But does it mean you're putting her head on the beer? I don't know. She died anyway, tragically. Uh, the pub saw many events. The Lord and Mayor's banquets were often held here. There was, as I said, it was a premier pub in Eccles. We had a bowling green at the side here, which only closed in 1969. Um, so many, many events. I came here, I started coming here about 1971. The landlord was Tony Green. A lot of people may remember him and his son. There was also a barmaid called Doris, Cockney lady. She, a memory woman, I think you'd call her. She could serve like six people at once with octopus type hands and uh, 
you'd get your right drink, the right change. Uh, she was a lovely woman. They also sold draft bass in here. I think it was possibly the only draft bass pub in the area. Or daft bass, as the locals used to call it after a few pints. Um, as I say, it was. I think it was the same thing in the 80s, 90s. There was a loss of disposable income, jobs, industry, etc. People stopped coming out as much. Uh, the pub went through several changes of owners, landlords, and it slowly declined, I'm sad to say. And then, let me get this correct now, 2016, the door shut for the last time, and it is now 10 apartments. I believe it's for people with special needs. Um, I'm not quite sure of the actual term for this, but I am glad it's not been demolished. That's the main thing. It's a lovely pub. It was a lovely pub. I'm certain many of you will have gone in here over the years and met friends, people, lovers. There also used to be a folk club upstairs, a function room, weddings, engagements. But yeah, it's a great pub and now just a footnote in Nichols Pub Istra. Continuing with our walk around Eccles and the disappearing pubs and buildings, which I, is close to my heart, but I'm delighted to say the NatWest Bank, lovely building, been closed for years, and this gentleman here, Ervis. Yeah, hi Tony, hello. We turned it to Acropoli. <laughs> Acropoli, the Greek uh, Acropolis. It is a wonderful bistro, cafe, restaurant, and the man should be applauded for what he's done. He's turned it around to regular, eating house, drinking house. He does such a lot of work for the community as well. He won't talk about it, but I will. He does a lot. So come in, support your man. Look how busy it is. Look how busy. Yeah, nice sitting area. We try to create some something nice for the community. Yeah. Jobs, of course. Yeah. Uh, food and a uh, nice little corner, it's of course. It's and beautiful good. drinks, beautiful food. There you go. Very nice Greek gin. Which we're going to try in a bit. <laughs> Greek gin, we'll have a bit of that. Greek gin, yeah, so of as course. I say, we're going to carry on with the walk, but come and support your local business and support this man. He does such yes. a lot for the town, believe me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Tony's the best. Eh? Yeah, You're I'm the best. You're the best. He's not a back slapping. <laughs> Cheers! Continuing with our tour of Eccles and the lost pubs, etc. We're at the bottom of Church Street now. Uh, I've heard this area referred to as a triangle of death. Got the bull's head there. And we have behind me the Nag's Head, which was known, better known as the Fox Vaults. And I'm glad to say they're both still open. But the pub I'm referring to, the Hare and Hounds, the black and white building behind me, sadly no more. Pound shop. I've heard it referred to as the Hare and Pounds. <laughs> but I'll give you a brief potted history of it. The pub itself dates from 1770s, that's what it was first licensed. Don't be fooled by the uh, mock Tudor beams, it, it wasn't that old. Uh, it's probably the most photographed pub in Eccles though, because of the proximity to Eccles Cross and the roundabouts. Uh, it's been the scene of many historical events, believe it or not. Have you heard of John Bright or James Chadwick? There's a statue to one of them in Albert Square. He, he spoke outside this pub regarding the anti-corn laws. Um, they, they were finally repealed, I think it was in the 1840s. Uh, 1845 they were repealed. Um, it was also a very popular meeting house with various societies of Eccles, that, which is an indication of days gone by. You had the Eccles Orange Men, that may believe it or not. They had the Eccles Borough Band used to meet here. Eccles Harriers. Uh, there's even a, a G, I can't what would be the word for it, the butterfly collectors. People collect the insect things. They met there, it's just as I say, a great indicator of Eccles' life that's gone, and also a pub that's gone. Now, I'm moving swiftly on to the early 1970s. The pub, where you can see the mobile zone, that used to be a small cafe. People may remember that. And the landlord of the time was Les Bailey and his wife Marjorie. And I'd say in the early 70s, probably the most popular pub in Eccles. Live music, live bands, brawls outside. It was, there was even a fountain here at one time. There. Bra <laughs> brawls a lot. One weird claim to fame, 1974. 
Noddy Holder of Slade, yes, Slade, the band. The shop over there, which with the flowers outside it, used to be Quinn's Record Store. Noddy Holder was here that day promoting a single called Far, Far Away. This was when Slade was going away from the glam rock period and, well, I think they will lose it. He had his photograph taken in the pub with the landlord and it was proudly displayed behind the bar. Yet yeah, there was no one then, it was an empty pub. Sorry about that, Noddy. Um, again, with a lot of other pubs throughout Eccles, if not through the country, it suffered from the, uh, let's say, the decline of the area, no disposable income, no jobs, etc. And in 2008, the pub <coughs> finally closed its doors. And several years later, it became Best Bargains, I think it's called. Yeah, uh, there's been a lot of controversy over this building as well now with the people complaining that the owners are blocking the pavements, selling cheap shoddy goods, etc. Again, I'll just say that I don't have any complaints with that, but I'm glad the pub's still open. Not as open, but the pub is still standing and hasn't been demolished, has met the fate of several others, as in the Top House and the Wellington, which we're going to have a look at in a minute. So, if you pass him, stop and remember those things. Not the older. Chadwick, Bright, Carl Lars. There's a lot going for it. And I'll see you later. Hard the book. Continuing with our tale of woe, I'm outside the town hall pub Eccles. Uh, it's not demolished, it hasn't been demolished, and hopefully it will not be demolished. Uh, sad thing is it's been shut for the last eight, nine years, I'd say. It's got a nice history, 1820s. Um, it was named after King George III, you know, the mad one, the nutter, that one, it was named after him. Uh, it changed its name to the Town Hall after the building was erected behind us, Eccles Town Hall, a fine building. And it was rebuilt in 1909 and it cost £4,000 to build that magnificent building. Now look at the state of it, it's the buddlier growing out of the roof, windows are smashed. Uh, it's a wonderful piece of architecture. I, I, I haven't a clue what's happening with it. I do know that there's bed and bed, bed and bed, bed and board there. Um, get back to the pub though, in the 70s, I used to go frequent the pub. It was always known as a, like I would say, a biker's pub, rocker's pub. Lively, shall we say. Iron Arse Al used to go in. Dino, people remember him. Quite a few characters in there. Um, again, Paul Quinn took it over in, I think it was 2012. And he ran a good ship, Paul. He's, as I say, he's got the station bar now. But the fate of it is unknown. I've heard it's going to be this, it's going to be that, but anything just to keep it open for me, don't demolish it. When you're passing, just look at it. Look at the, the ornate brickwork. The cupola dome on the top. It's got a mosaic floor as you walk in. Obviously you can't see it now because the door's shut. Uh, look at the, above the archway. The mouldings on it, they're fantastic. It's sad to see it like this, it really is. But let's hope that it does reopen at some time in the near future as a pub. I'd love to see it reopen, I know a lot of other people would. So if you bear with me, we're going to walk along and have a look at a few more pubs. That are closed, demolished, and uh, yeah, one of them. Come on. Behind me is the Duke of York pub. Uh, been a pub on this site again since the 1860s. Obviously, this is the newer one. It was always, it was always again a popular pub. It used to have a folk club upstairs, snooker tables, wedding receptions. People think that it was a coaching house because of the arch there. It wasn't, believe me, it wasn't a coaching house. I'm now on the corner of Shuttle Street, Eccles. I'm stood outside the Albert Edward pub. This was one of my locals, just, I won't say one of my many, it was one of my locals. Probably my favourite pub in Eccles with a fine record dating back to the 1830s when it was known as an October shop. For those of you with an interest in history, October 1830 was the, a law was passed which entitled people for the price of one guinea to open their house to sell beer 
and this was to combat the sale of gin. Uh, you may have seen the whole gas print, Gin Street. Uh, the government was worried about the flooding of the country with gin leading to moral degradation and all sorts of shenanigans, which we know never happened. But, the Albert Edward. Interesting little story, I've got a few interesting stories. 1880, the landlady, Annie Valentine, got cut. 1880, the landlady, Alan, Annie Valentine, was in the yard at the realist pub here when she was struck by a bolt of lightning and killed. Bad, sad, I know. But in 1904, her cousin, Jim Valentine, who was an international rugby player, played for Swinton, etc., he was killed by a bolt of lightning on a holiday in Barmouth in Wales. Now, the expression lightning doesn't strike twice proved wrong because it did. Move fast on to 1915. Sinking of the Lusitania off the coast of Ireland by a German submarine. Now, there was a loss of 1,200 lives and they say it hastened America's entry into the war. But throughout England, and particularly Lancashire, there was an outbreak of hostilities towards foreign-owned shops, butchers, bakers, anyone with a foreign-sounding name. The shops were getting looted and robbed, and the same happened in Eccles. The landlord of this pub behind me was named Oscar Lorenz. He was an Austrian. He was advised by the police not to open the doors, but to leave the area, as there was a mob coming. The police were proved right. Behind me over there, it's called Eccles Cross. And on the evening of May the 7th, a crowd estimated 2,000 strong gathered. They stormed the pub, wrecked it. They stole all the beer, spirits, tobaccos, anything worth stealing. And the only casualty was a soldier home on leave who got hit on the head with a brick. Uh, patriotic looter, I suppose you'd call him. Uh, Oscar Lorenz never came back. I can't blame him. But there were stories of uh, Austrians, people of Germanic descent, having to put the birth certificates in the shop windows to show that they were British or British of descent. There was a yeah, Patricroft as well. There was tailors shops looted, butchers shops. Butchers shops were a popular target because don't forget there's a war on, there was a food shortage. And there was butchers shops, to say, on Church Street that were looted. A lot of people associate this pub with the name The Stinking Stocking, and quite rightly so. Now, the story I was told many years ago was the ladies of the night, shall we say, used to frequent the pub, with, got friendly with a seaman from Barton Wharf, the, shop, the ships used to berth there. And one chap told me the floor of the pub was painted green to make the cows feel more at home. I don't know how true that is either. Other people tried telling me that he got the name Stinking Stocking because uh, Workers from the nearby mills had come in here and <laughs> draped the stockings over the clothes made to dry them off. And that's not very plausible to me. I prefer the more salubrious version of the ladies of the night, the stinking stocking. Now, how can you put this politely? The pub was in the news several years ago, Armistice Day, when that chap, I won't mention his name, set the fireworks off from the window upstairs. Uh, he got in prison for it. He said he was doing it as a joke and he thought it was a, a good thing to celebrate and mourn the dead. I don't think so. Now the landlord, the owner of the brewery, Humphrey Smith, he's a bit of a tyrant, shall we say. He's got a reputation for opening and closing his pubs on a whim. Closing them if you seem to be enjoying yourselves, like the use of a mobile phone. He doesn't have jukeboxes in, uh, fruit machines, mobile phones are banned, that's up to him, I don't mind that. But he can just come in and shut, shut the pub down and not reopen it. This has been closed for almost two years. He did it with the race course in Salford, he did it with the, the, the big one, the Prince of Wales in Broughton, the windmill. He's a strange character, he's, I don't think he's a very nice person, but hopefully he'll come to his senses and the pub will reopen. Uh, as I say, great pub, and the closure of any pub pains me really, and uh, we've seen far too much of it in Eccles over the years, far too much. The car park just here, and for
further on, the extension to Aldi, there used to be a pub on there, the little, the Wellington pub, the Welly, a Holtz's pub, you may remember it. Uh, it's not got a great history to it. it. Dated from the 1870s, it closed in 1957, and a new pub was built on this, this site here, 1958. I do recall it was just two rooms, and there's a revolving door to get into the main room. Uh, it was not much to say about it really. I remember if somebody described the, they had a, a refurb of it. It was kitted out and cleaned up, and someone said it resembled a Louisiana brothel. No, oh, they must have either been to Louisiana or a brothel. I'm not sure, but that's what they said. I went in once or twice and I was actually in there in the evening it closed and there was a bit of a free for all. People were taking souvenirs, uh, paintings off the walls, pictures, the till, little mementos. It's not been built upon the site. We've still got this reminder here, but as I say, the oldie piece, Aldi, was where the welly was. And on reflection, Holtz's haven't been too kind to Eccles. We've lost quite a few pubs, the Crown and Volunteer down the road, that's Holtz's, that's gone. The one in the Ellesmere in Winton's gone. It's, it's quite a few, but as I say, that's quite a sad state of affairs, Eccles. We're losing far too many pubs and the changing face of Eccles for you, isn't it? So. so that concludes our part three of the lost pubs of Eccles and the changing face of the town. Cheers. Cut that bit out, I'll start again then, shall I? You're just going to cut all that out? Yeah. And I'll say about the welly. Nice tape, yeah. Probably will not put that in as a blue He's still camera rolling. Right. You're going to have to... Yeah. You're going to have to get the angle.